Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2023 Ford F-150. Not all F-150s come with a trailer hitch from the factory, and if yours is the case, then adding a hitch is a great way to not only have a ball mount, but also accessories, whereas you can do a bumper toe on here, but you're limited to just a ball. And this one being a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening means that you're gonna have tons of options when it comes to bike racks, cargo carriers, or ball mounts. And all of those are gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Now, this does not come with the hitch, but generally when you pick up accessories, they're gonna come with one. Uh, now, if you plan on leaving a ball mount or bike racks on your truck, and you wanna make sure that they stay safe, you can look at locking pin and clips. We have a bunch of options here at eTrailer. That way you can lock it in place and know that no one's gonna walk away with that accessory. You got a nice rolled style safety chain loop, nice and open for your standard S hooks or a larger clevis style hook is gonna go on here, no problem, so you can safely hook up your safety chains. Now, speaking of towing, you do wanna to adhere to the weight capacities of this hitch, and it's rated pretty well. Your gross trailer weight rating out the gate is gonna be 6,000 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer, plus the accessories loaded onto it, so not a bad tow capacity there. Now, your tongue weight, which is the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening, is gonna be 10 to 15% of your gross trailer, but this one comes in at 900 pounds, and that's also gonna play ball with those suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks, and with 900 pounds, you're gonna have a really hard time overloading that tongue weight. This can be used with a weight distribution hitch if you need to bump up those numbers a little bit more for the capacity. With that distribution hitch in place, this goes up to 10,000 pounds. So that really opens up the window to what you can tow. Uh, your tongue weight also goes up by 100 pounds, so that's gonna come in at 1,000 pounds. Now keep in mind, just because the hitch is rated for that doesn't mean that the truck is, so you do wanna check the vehicle's owner's manual, make sure that it's capable of towing those numbers, compare that with the hitch, and then take the lowest of those numbers to stay safe. Now, if you're choosing a ball mount for your truck, you wanna make sure that it sticks out far enough to be able to hook up to that coupler without making contact, or if you have folding accessories like cargo carriers or bike racks, you wanna make sure that they can stow in the vertical position. And this one I think will be okay because from the center of the hitchman hole to the furthest point of the bumper, it's coming in at three inches. So you should be okay there. Just keep in mind uh, those stowed accessories in that upward position, probably not gonna be able to open up your tailgate, but you can fold those down no problem. As far as ground clearance goes, this is gonna be important for choosing that ball mount for that rise or drop necessary. So this one's coming in at 17 and a half inches. So you can measure the coupler of your trailer, compare that with this measurement and then de determine the riser drop necessary to get your trailer nice and level. Something to keep in mind, if you are putting a bike rack or cargo carrier on here, it's gonna extend, uh, the, you know, obviously the length of the vehicle. And as you go up inclines, those tilt towards the ground. So just keep that in mind on some you know, little more aggressive situations, a really steep incline or on rocky or rough terrain. Uh, you wanna make sure those don't bottom out. So just drive accordingly. Now, as far as the installation goes, this one isn't terribly hard to do. Uh, you're gonna remove your spare tire and then just fish wire in some hardware, tape up some spacers. Uh, you're probably gonna want an extra set of hands to get the hitch raised up. It's pretty clunky and to get the hardware in place can be a little bit cumbersome. So having that extra set of hands to help you out is definitely gonna make a big difference. But this can be done in your driveway or garage. It doesn't take too terribly long. And I'm gonna walk you through all the steps to make sure you get it installed. So let's take a look at that. To begin our installation, first you're gonna to wanna to remove your spare tire. So lower that down, get it out of the way. It's gonna give us a lot more room to work underneath here. And then we'll head over to our passenger side frame rail. Here we're gonna find a ground attached with a 10 millimeter bolt. So we'll go ahead and get this removed. And we're gonna be, there's new hardware included with the hitch. So we're not gonna be reusing this bolt. You can kind of hold on to that if you want, but either way, it's not gonna go back on. Once that's removed, you can just take your ground wire and set it up here for now. We'll reinstall that later. On our driver's side, we have this large harness that we'll need to remove. There's a circular part that clips into the frame rail and there's tabs on it. What I recommend doing, you can use a flathead screwdriver, just push one of the tabs in. There's gonna be one on the other side. You might wanna put a little bit of backwards pressure just to kind of pull this out. But once you push that tab in, that'll slide out. There's also a plastic push pin in the frame, so we'll just pry this off, and that's gonna get this out of the way. I recommend getting this zip tied up out of the way because we're gonna be mounting up some hardware, and just for getting our hitch up, it's gonna be a lot easier with this uh, tucked away. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda run this up over this cross member, and then just with zip ties, zip this up out of the way.
On both sides of the vehicle, we're gonna grab our U-shaped spacers, and these are gonna fill up the gap that's in this inset. We'll need to make sure that we're not covering up this ground hole because eventually we're gonna be using that new bolt to get that ground wire back in place. So take this, center it up. You can see we still have our gap here. And then we're gonna just take some masking tape or we have painter's tape here, whatever you may have to kind of keep this stuck in place. And then just make sure that this is notched out to be able to get that hardware in place. We still have our access hole here, so we're looking good. We'll go ahead and tape up the other side as well. We need to get our hardware in place and we'll start with this U-shaped spacer hole. We're gonna grab our carriage bolt, our fish wire and our spacer block. And there's an access hole that's on the back of the frame here, but I don't think this is gonna fit. So we're gonna use this access hole that's further up the frame. Take your coiled end and feed this through the hole. And then as you feed it back, feel for that coiled end. You may have to kind of fish around for it, but then we'll pull that through. I'm gonna put a little bend on this end just to kind of keep it from pulling through the frame. And then we'll take our spacer block. We can drop this in the frame. And then your carriage bolt, you'll just thread onto this coiled section. And then we'll grab this tail end here, push the carriage bolt in the frame. And then as you kind of bring this over, you may have to jostle it around a little bit. And you'll see that this is gonna be able to pull through here. Now, when we raise the hitch up, we're gonna wanna make sure that this isn't in the way. So for now, we're just gonna push this back in the frame reel. Our other mounting point is gonna be the hole that's towards the rear of the vehicle on the lower side, really close to that access hole. So what we'll do here, feed this over. Drop in our spacer block. We'll feed on our carriage bolt. And then on this one, we're gonna be using an extra spacer block that's gonna go between the frame and the hitch. So it may not stay on here, but what we'll do is I'm gonna push this back in. I'm gonna take my spacer block and then just kind of bend our fish wire here so it stays in place because as we raise the hitch up, we want this to slide in place over. We'll just go ahead and repeat the same steps on the other side of the truck. Grab an extra set of hands to raise the hitch up in place and have a serrated flange nut ready on uh, both sides to get one started. Uh, as we slide this up, just make sure that washer kind of gets in place right where we're gonna mount up our stud. So just raise this up and then you may have to kind of move the hitch around to get the openings to line up, but uh, we'll try to get one of these carriage bolts passed in. Key here, make sure it doesn't fit, pull back in the frame rail. So what you can do is use the weight of the hitch. You can remove the pull wire and let the hitch rest on that so it doesn't fall back in. But once we get this taken off, we'll start up our flange nut. And just a few threads will be enough to kind of hold that in. And if you can, you can go ahead and get the other side uh, or the front one also in place. Before we tighten everything down, we want to make sure that this uh, ground bolt is going to be aligned to get this in place. If you need a little bit of extra slack, you can remove this plastic push pin and we'll just get this just a few threads started now. This is pretty tight here, so it kind of threads into it. So just kind of align it up and you may have to move the hitch around as necessary um, to get this started. But just get a few threads started here first. And now we can start tightening these down using a 15 16 socket. I'm going to use an impact here, but we're going to be coming back with a torque wrench. You don't have to get too crazy here. Now, once you've drawn those in, then you can thread the rest of your ground bolt in place. This is gonna be a 13 millimeter socket to accomplish that. To torque this down, we're using the torque settings found in the instruction manual. And you're gonna want a half inch torque wrench. That way you can get up to the settings required. If you need a torque wrench, uh, these are available here at eTrailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. This is gonna make sure that long-term the hardware is gonna be tight enough to keep the hitch up and also not too tight, putting any stress on it. 
So go through, torque down the rest of the hardware. Now the harness that we zip tied up out of the way obviously made it nice and easy to get it uh, to where we can get our hitch in place. But there is a hole here. If you want to, you can uh, take that zip tie down and put it back in place. You can leave it zip tied up here. It's not going to hurt anything. It's kind of up to you. Now something I'll point out is this is going to cut into a little bit of the spare tire space. We were able to get ours put back in place, but depending on your trim package, a full size spare may not go back up uh, without a, quite a bit of a bind. So this is actually rubbing against the trailer hitch, but it is back in place. Our tire size here today is a 245-70-17. So if you have a larger full size spare than that, you might want to, uh, that might be something you want to consider. It may not be able to go back up, but if you have that tire size, it is going to work. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Ford F-150.